Today we're going to have some fun on 10 meters. And I'm going to show you a simple way we can have some fun on this somewhat mysterious band. So stick around. Hi, I'm Michael, KB9VBR. I'm on a mission to inspire and educate the amateur radio community. And you know what? The 10 meter band has been really hot the last few months. In fact, all of the upper bands have been, have seen this, a lot of increased activity. Uh, we're climbing in the solar cycle and we're just seeing more and more of those upper bands opening up, which is great. Um, which means we're gonna hear more stuff happening on the 10 meter band. And what's notable about the 10 meter band is is it's, the, it's one of the HF bands that's open for technicians to use, and it's the only HF band that can, technicians can use uh, with phone or voice operation. So I thought, hey, you know, it would be kind of neat to show you a real simple way to get on the air with 10 meters, and uh, you know, let's have some fun with it. So what I'm doing here today is I built a 10 meter dipole antenna. All I did was take a piece of, um, this is heavy plastic, uh, quarter, uh, eighth inch uh, HPDE uh, plastic. I drilled a couple holes in here, a uh, five, eight, five eighths inch hole uh, for the antenna connector, and then a smaller hole that I'm gonna put my rope in, and then two for the elements. Uh, now, what size do we need for our antenna elements? Well, there's a real easy way to find out. And it's a, you can use the formula 468 divided by your frequency in megahertz, and that will give you the length of a half-wave antenna in feet. Now, if you're in one of those other countries that hasn't landed on the moon, uh, you can use 133 divided by your frequency in megahertz to get the length in meters for a half-wave antenna. Uh, so, uh, 468 divided tw by 28.3 megahertz gave me a length of 16 and a half feet. So that would be the overall length of my uh, dipole antenna. Uh, split that in half. That's eight and a quarter feet or um, eight, in, eight feet uh, three inches per leg. So for my, for my dipole antenna, 16, 16, or yeah, 16 feet, six, uh, 16 feet, six inches for the overall length. Now, when I cut this antenna, I left a little bit of extra space on the end, you know, about four inches, because what I'm gonna need to do is I'll use these um, insulators on the end uh, to, um, to tie it off. Uh, these are just standard um, electric fence insulators. I bought a big bag of them at the um, farm and ranch store. Uh, they work great for antennas, very inexpensive. Uh, for, for this, uh, they're nothing. They're nothing special. Uh, I probably could have used the same chunk of plastic I used for my center center connector as I did for these, um, but um, I went with this. So, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the my um, end insulators on. I got a I got a tree here. I kind of figured out that's going to get me up into the air. A neat thing about the 10 meter band is if you want to do DX, you should get your you should hang your dipole up a half wave. Uh, from ground and that's 16 and a half feet so it doesn't have to be very high in the air to get a nice low takeoff angle so we're gonna we're gonna put this antenna on the air and then we're gonna see if we can get some DX with it there we go The moment of truth here. Uh, I hooked the antenna up to the analyzer. I got it sort of in an inverted V formation. It's easiest to set up. Uh, flat top would be best for DX, but um, inverted V will work. Uh, looks like it's a little bit on the long side. It's resonant uh, 1.3 to 1 at about 27 megahertz. So <laughs> oh, it'd be great for the CB band, but not so much for 10 meters. Uh, at a 28.3, it was about 2 to 1. So what I need to do is shorten it. Uh, the easiest way to shorten an antenna like this is to just go to the end insulators and just um, 
pull in a little bit of that wire um, and that should that should fix it. I had some extra wire on the end because um, I just added some for uh, adding the uh, insulators and you always want to put a little bit of extra wire on your dipole antennas because you can always trim down but it's tougher to add more. Uh, so reduced it about six inches on both sides, put it back onto the meter and uh, what I get is uh, an SWR of about 1.3 to 1 in the 10 meter band. That's really good actually because if you look at the other uh, readings, you'll see that my impedance is about 65 ohms. Uh, reactance is very low, which is, which is great to see. Um, you got to remember that with dipole antennas, the, um, if they're properly tuned, they're going to have an impedance of about 70 ohms and your SWR is going to be about yeah, 1.3 or so, uh, 1.5 to 1. So this is perfectly normal. This is great actually. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my coax, uh, get it snaked into the house, hook it up and get this antenna on the air. Kilo Bravo Niner, Victor Bravo Romeo. Uh, 5 9 Wisconsin, Whiskey India. Thanks, K6AF. Kilo Bravo Niner, Victor Bravo Romeo. Kilo Bravo Niner, Victor Bravo Romeo. Kilo Bravo Nine, Victor Bravo Romeo, is that Roger? QSL, QSL 5 9 Whiskey India. Okay, thanks, Wisconsin, 5 9 Alpha Zulu. 7 3. 7 3, November 7, Alpha Tango. So how will I know when the 10 meter band is open and what can I expect for propagation when, it, when I do get on the air? This is probably the most challenging part of the band as propagation can vary dramatically with the solar cycle. As we are currently climbing towards the peak of cycle 25, the propagation and frequency of bands opening will increase. But as the solar cycle wanes, the band will close up and with few random exemptions not offer much activity. That's because t propagation for 10 meters relies heavily on the F2 layer of the ionosphere. This layer is the one that is the most affected by sunspots and solar activity. As solar radiation hits the layer, it becomes energized and shorter wavelength signals bounce off it. For this reason, the best time to work 10 meters is during the day. As the Earth rotates early to midday, it will, be the, will give you the best chances for European and East Asian contacts and late afternoon westerly contacts like Japan and Australia and Asia will dominate. Late evenings and into the night the band will shorten until the F2 layer loses its energy and the band closes. 10 meters does have a wild card though and it's the sporadic E propagation. The E layer which is comprised primarily of ionized metallic particles, can reflect shorter wavelength signals. Sporadic E propagation happens most often in the late spring and early summer around the solstice, but it also shows up in the wintertime during that solstice. VHF signals like 2 and 6 meter bands are the most receptive to sporadic E, but it can also happen with the 10 meter band. Since sporadic E is not dependent on sunspots, this effect can happen even at the bottom of the solar cycle. It's also a good reminder that if you're hearing E skip on the 10 meter band, to also check out 6 meters for openings. And if you see activity on 6 meters, 10 is probably open too. So what should we look for in propagation? Uh, the Solar Flux Index, or SFI, is a good start. Higher numbers mean more solar activity and a greater chance that the maximum usable frequency will rise. An SFI of 150 is a good start and when it rises over 200, the upper band should really be alive. Increased solar activity charges the F2 layer, so it may take a few days of consistently high solar flux indexes in order to really charge the F2 layer and get that band hopping. Now it's commonly accepted that during the summer months, with longer days and better chance of sporadic E propagation, you'll hear more 10 meter band openings. But that's actually not the case, and the winter months can deliver some of the best 10 meter activity. I kind of wondered why that was the case, and I found the answer in the ARL handbook. On page 19.17, propagation of radio signals, daytime ionization in the winter F2 layer averages four times the level of the summer at the same period of the solar cycle doubling the maximum usable frequency. This so-called winter anomaly 
is caused by a seasonal increase in the ratio of atoms to molecules at F2 layer heights. Atoms are instrumental in the creation of electrons, whereas molecules are instrumental in the loss of electrons. Winter F2 conditions are much superior to those in the summer because the maximum usable frequency is much higher. Thank you, K6, way about, way about. Kilo Bravo Niner, Victor Bravo Romeo. Kilo Bravo Nine, Victor Bravo Radio. Five Nine, Arizona. Uh, five Nine, Wisconsin, Whiskey India. Thank you, K6, way about, way about. Papa Tango, Father Zulu, Papa Tango, Kilo Bravo Niner, Victor Bravo Romeo. Kilo Bravo Nine, Victor Bravo Radio, fifty nine four one five. Roger four one five five nine into Whiskey India. Whiskey India, thank you, Papa Tango Four Zulu. Tango India, one tango, Countess. Uh, we see one Zulu, Zulu, you five nine, uh, thirteen eighty seven. Thank you, Tango India, one tango. Kilo Bravo Niner, Victor Bravo Romeo. Kilo Bravo, uh, Kilo Bravo Nine, Victor Bravo Radio, you five nine, thirteen eighty eight. QSL 138859 Whiskey India. Thank you. Tango India 1 Tango. By now, as you could probably surmise, uh, the reason why I put this uh, 10 meter antenna up was to uh, work the ARRL's 10 meter contest, which always happens in early December. Uh, didn't do too bad uh, for the contest this year. I'm not a real big contester. I like my QSO parties and um, other types of special events, but um, you know, contesting is, is usually not something I'm gonna commit an entire weekend to. So it was a little bit more of a casual kind of operation, uh, just hunting pounce up and down the band, picking out stations as I could and um, for that I think I did pretty good 65 contacts over the weekend uh, let's see 20 multipliers about 2600 points which is decent not outstanding but it's decent so um, west coast and to the south uh, was really good uh, Saturday afternoon gangbusters uh, south and central America uh, the west coast uh, California, Oregon, Washington, etc. So um, yeah, the antenna really, really uh, was performing quite well, and I'm, I'm, I'm pleased uh, with its performance. Uh, definitely better than my main antenna, which is a G5 RV, and for some reason the G5 just doesn't work well on 10 meters for me. So um, I think maybe what I'll do is I'm going to leave this antenna up for the winter, and I'll, I'll, I'll weatherproof it. Um, so it's just a little more semi-permanent and uh, we'll play we'll continue to play with it for the winter and then the spring you know when there's more activity in the backyard i'll probably have to pack it up for a little bit or or who knows you know maybe <laughs> maybe i'll reorient the cable and um we'll use it for those summer 10 meter band openings but um, i'm definitely going to spend more time on the 10 meter band and i hope uh, this little exploration of 10 meters uh, this this uh, in this video you found um really uh really helpful uh it's a it's a fun band it's a little bit of a mysterious band you know because it just kind of opens and closes when you least expect it so i think it's it's kind of you know maybe a little bit misunderstood um if you're not really familiar with um band conditions and propagation you might you know you might miss out on it but um hey get let's get active on the 10 meter band it's definitely going to be heating up again in, a couple, in the coming months and um, you know, over the next few years too as we peak the solar cycle. So, oh, you got any questions about 10 meters, uh, the 10 meter dipole, uh, things like that, drop them in the comments below. If you like this kind of content, you know, give me that thumbs up, uh, hit the like and subscribe, that really helps out a whole lot. It lets me know that um, this is the kind of stuff people are looking for. So, but, um, yeah, Michael, KB9VBR, you have a great day in 73. You are good. Kilo Bravo Niner, Victor Bravo Romeo. Kilo Bravo Niner, Victor Bravo Romeo, 5-9 Bravo Romeo. <laughs> 5 nine. Oh, in Florida. I'm, I'm done. I, I just need to get out of here. <laughs> QSL, QSL, I, I know what you mean. 5-9 Whiskey India. Thank you for Whiskey India. I need some whiskey.